θέατρα που παρουσιάζουν ένα ολόκληρε θεατρικέ παραστάσει. A compartment in the top of the device contained sand, and when it was released through a series of holes, it pulled down a weight. The weight was attached to a rope which was wound around an axle. When the rope unwound from the axle, the device moved forward. When fully unwound, a lever clicked, the weight was lifted, and the device trundled back again. Heron wrote a whole treatise about automatic theatres. The idea of the automatic theatre is that it can move by itself. Automaton in Greek actually means a self-mover. Heron is quite interested in making absolutely sure that you make it quite small so that the audience won't suspect that there's actually a person inside the theatre running the show. A simple spindle with pegs which made all these movements possible was in fact one of Heron's greatest inventions. This carefully wound arrangement of pegs and ropes is what a modern computer scientist would call a program. No doubt the audiences at Alexandria's theaters marveled at these moving sets for a while. But as Heron knew, audiences are always looking for something new to grab their attention. He had automated the set, but what about the actors? This would be his next bold step, to create an entirely automatic theater production with automatic sets, actors, and effects that would run on its own for over 20 minutes. Heron decided to automate the classic Greek tale of tragedy and bloody revenge, Nopolis. The story tells of how King Nopolis seeks revenge after his son is killed by Ajax at the close of the Trojan Wars. The play begins with 12 characters repairing a warship, all moving automatically. Below the action, the mechanics all remain hidden inside the box. Leaving the audience is astounded and intrigued to see all these wooden characters moving in unison. To complete the illusion, Heron added sounds and special effects. Scenes changed and back cloths dropped automatically, providing a new background for each piece of the action in turn. To prevent collisions between characters, the action all took place on different planes, which rose and fell at different times during the performance. Powering the whole pageant was a system of weights and ropes, sand glasses and seed hoppers, utilizing gravity to provide the required energy. The complexity of so many choreographed automatic elements was an incredible feat of engineering and ingenuity. As the ship in the story encountered a storm, Heron used an automatic thunder machine to shake some fear into the audience. Goddess Athena appears on cue to command the weather as the story reaches its climax. She causes a bolt of lightning to hit Ajax, the enemy in the story. He dies, and our hero Nopolis finally has his revenge.
As the final sounds rang out around the theater, the first time this play was performed, the audience must have been enraptured by the spectacle in front of them. Actually making the play happen was no less miraculous than the event the audience had just witnessed. It might not be magic, but it required a mathematical genius to make it work. Timing every element of the story correctly, calculating the exact weights for balances and counterbalances, the speed of the cogs and the order of the scenes would baffle many engineers today and was perhaps miraculous in itself. The engine which drove the whole show was this hopper. It harnessed the power of gravity and was filled with either sand or seeds. The slow release of these then started the chain of events. As the seeds fell, a weight on top of them lowered. That weight then pulled a rope, which then in turn turned a spindle. This spindle was effectively the master control. It held the program stored in a complex system of ropes wound around pegs which set off different aspects of the show when the rope was unwound past certain points. It triggered the individual pieces of the theater, such as this spindle, which revolved to make dolphins apparently leap through the waves. In Alexandrian theaters like this, Crowds may once have gasped as roars of thunder and flashes of lightning emerged from the strange automatic theater on stage and reverberated around the auditorium. The theater in Alexandra, I think, was at the center of the city's life. Also, and importantly, before the highly critical audience in the theater in Alexandria, reputations were won and lost. And it's in that highly competitive context that we should see Heron of Alexandria's spectacular stage devices. These were devices meant to wow the audience. It's difficult to recapture something of their impact, but I imagine that it was like watching the first talking movies at the beginning of the 20th century. Something that would make you want to come back to the theatre, something that would make you remember Heron of Alexandria as an inventor. Heron was an entertainer and a flamboyant inventor. While many of Heron's designs were intended to either impress worshippers in a temple or to entertain audiences in a theatre, some were mechanical toys or novelties built simply for amusement in the home. But one invention could have changed the world forever. It's a steam-powered engine. Invented by Heron thousands of years before its time. Heron's work, Catoptrica, deals with his study of light and mirrors. In it, he states that vision results from light rays emitted by the eyes, and that these rays travel with infinite speed. Modern marvels will continue in a moment. discovered the power of fire, water, and air, and finally he combined his knowledge to create steam power. This would lead to the invention of a simple but remarkable device. The strange machine is Heron Steam Ball, the first steam turbine engine and the fastest revolving mechanical instrument in the ancient world. Heron was just half a step away from inventing the steam engine. He knew the principles of steam power. He had designed a revolutionary device. What might have happened if he'd taken that extra half step?
I'm heating up the um, this container here so that it generates steam. There's water in here, and the uh, steam will come up through these pipes into this ball and out through these jets, and then it should spin. It was a sight to behold. Karen had managed to control the power of steam. It was a remarkable breakthrough. This device could perhaps have started an industrial revolution 2,000 years ago. Had Heron combined what he knew about pistons with this steam ball invention, he might have made a true steam engine. The invention of the steam engine in 1721 ushered in the Industrial Revolution, bringing in its wake mass production, high-speed travel, and the birth of the age of the consumer. The modern world was forged by the steam engine. But how would the world look today if that giant leap had been taken by Heron nearly 2,000 years earlier? So why didn't Heron's greatest invention start a revolution? Perhaps he simply didn't make the connections and never saw this wonderful machine as anything more than a toy. Or more ominously, in a world run on cheap and plentiful slave power, perhaps no one saw the need for labor-saving devices. It's fascinating to speculate how the world might be different today if we hadn't forgotten Heron of Alexandria and his wonderful inventions, if they'd been embraced rather than rejected by medieval scholars. If the people who'd seen the wondrous steam ball had thought of it as more than an idle curiosity or just a children's plaything. After all, it's clear from his inventions that Heron of Alexandria knew about steam mechanics and knew the basis of computer programming. There's an interesting scholarly question, which is, you look at Heron's writings and, and those of his contemporaries, and we feel they're almost approaching technological liftoff. That in another generation or two, with the steam engine and other inventions in the wake of that, we might almost have been facing an industrial revolution taking place 2,000 years before it actually occurred. We consider ourselves today at the cutting edge of technology, but in many ways we are only just beginning to catch up with developments in the ancient world. Two thousand years ago, there was a world more familiar and more advanced than we could have imagined. A time when mechanical machines brought wonder and magic to ancient cities. A time that has been forgotten for centuries and is only now beginning to be revealed again. What ancient discoveries still await us and what others have been lost forever? Heron has given us just a 